How's it going? Uh, my name is Luke Virgil. I'm with Wayne Area Economic Development. I'm the executive director there. Um, and we do a lot of different things, but uh, one, of the, one of the things that we do is we help people get a job sometimes. Uh, we help them connect with employers or we help uh, them prepare a resume or we help them practice an interview because that's, there's a lot of different facets about um, getting a job that are not exactly easy. And what I want to talk to you today about is why somebody would want to hire you. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that we can, we can prepare, but I've kind of distilled it down to four major points that I think are really important to think about when you want to try and get a job. Um, first off, it's who you know. Um, there are a lot of different people that would say, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I believe that's very true when it comes to trying to find a job. Um, it, we, can, we can look at things as, as in two different lights, whether it's your references or your, um, your networking. And your references would, would be people that you actually know that can vouch for you and say, this individual is very good at what they do. So I would have references for economic development that would say, Luke is really good at visiting with businesses, or he's really good at going out and working on a project. And those people could say that Luke would be good for the next job that he wants. Uh, networking is another way that we can use who you know, um, and there's two different ways that you can have networking. It can either be face-to-face -face or digital. Um, the most common digital format would be LinkedIn. The, it, it's the social media, media platform that you see um, out there for professionals or for people that are really career-minded. Um, it's a way to talk about the skill sets that you have. It's a way for people to vouch for you and kind of be uh, references without actually being a formal reference. Um, and then there's face-to-face -face networking, where if you go to conferences or if you go to continuing education, you meet people in the profession or even outside of your own profession that can help you get a, a job maybe in a different community, a different state, or maybe within the community, community that you're already in. Um, and so the, it's, it's who you know is a big part of why somebody might be willing to hire you. Those connections run very deep. Um, you know, people talk about, I knew somebody that was a fraternity brother when I was in college. Well, that's part of that networking piece. Or I know somebody because they grew up in the same hometown as my parents. Um, that's, that goes back to that networking piece. Or I, you, even on the networking piece, they can, they can be a reference and not even know it. They can say, hey, I knew this person from way back when I was a kid and they're a super hard worker. I think they'd be great for the job. Moving on, the second piece of, of what I say is very important for why somebody would hire you is what you know. Um, like I said, it's not what you know, but who you know, but what you know is also very important too. Um, and that includes things like your experience or your education or your degree. Um, we'll talk about experience first, and that includes your past jobs. So if you have been in the workforce for a long time, uh, you can use that experience to help you get new jobs. If you have not been in the workforce for very long, and as sophomores, you probably haven't had a lot of jobs other than what your mom and dad have you do, um, it's hard to get that experience. So you need to find ways to, to get experience. Uh, good ways to find that experience, you can do job shadows. A lot of schools in the area provide job shadow days where they connect students with actual businesses and different types of jobs. This gives you a chance to immerse yourself in that, in that work uh, and you can say, this is something I'd actually like to do. Um, and then as you move along in your career path, you can say, hey, I did this job shadowing. I like that. I think I'm going to call on those people that I worked with on the job shadow and see if they might be able to give me a job. Or maybe another type of, uh, of way to get experience would be an internship. A lot of times internships happen when you're in, in college, usually towards the end of your education, because you've got a lot of the education done. And then it's time to go out into the workforce and start getting that real world experience. Um, I've mentioned before, the education piece is very important. And I think it's, it's very important to talk about the different types of education that are out there. Um, there are two-year institutions like your technical schools. Northeast Community College in Norfolk would be a very good example of that. Or you have four-year schools like Wayne State College or the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. These are your traditional colleges where you would spend that four to five years getting a, a, a degree, either a bachelor's degree in science or a bachelor's degree in arts. Um, and those help you get a, a different type of job. I don't want to say that one is better than the other because there are so many different careers from the 
the two-year schools or even from the four-year schools where you can make a very, very good living. Um, but I will say this, there are there are lots of different jobs in Nebraska, but there is one stat that I know that has held true for the better part of 90 years. Um, they call it the one to seven ratio. And they say for every one job that requires a professional degree, like a doctorate, there are two jobs that require a bachelor's degree. And then there are seven other jobs that require either a technical degree or less. So a high school education, a, a associate's degree from, from Northeast Community College. And the reason I point that out is just there, that's, that statistic has not changed for, for 90 years, like I said. So there are going to be a lot more jobs available that require that associate's degree or less here in the state of Nebraska. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't have to go to college. I think that you should go and you should you should pursue education as much as you want. I've been a lifelong learner. I, I've, I went to, to college and school for a long time, but it, it's something that you as an individual have to make that choice as to what degree of education you want to you want to get before you go into the workforce. And there, there are a lot of different degrees where you might start in one realm and you find out that that's not going to be for you and in, in your career. And so you have to change and that's okay too. So we've talked about who you know and what you know. The third thing I like to talk about is how you look and how you act. And things have changed a lot in this realm, especially in light of COVID-19. So I want to talk a little bit about how you look and how you act on paper and on the digital formats like video or on social media. Um, one of the golden tickets to getting a job is your resume and cover letter. And not every job requires a resume or cover letter, but there are a couple of tips that I would focus on when it comes to doing a resume. One, you need to focus on the job that you're applying for. You can't just give a blanket resume for every job that you're going to apply for. People want to see that you are taking the time to focus on their position. Um, you need to start with a great summary of yourself. You need to emphasize the job title and not your dates on your job th that you've had in your work history. Um, don't just list your work history. Give them things that you did while you were in that position. Um, get rid of useless details. Don't ramble. And maybe I sound like I'm rambling on this video, but in a, in a resume, it needs to be very concise. Um, don't use a template. Like I said, make it individualized for the job that you're applying for. Um, you can't get very personal on a resume because as a, as a, as a reviewer of resumes, you don't have a lot of time to look to, to get personal. That's why they have further stages. And we'll talk about that later on. Um, keep it very simple. Make sure you proofread it and tell the truth. There's something that I think it needs to be said about telling the truth with, with applying for jobs. It's very important that you are truthful. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ways, you know, maybe you've heard about catfishing and, you know, people that pretend to be somebody else when when it's on social media and the same thing happens with with workforce and with your resume you can put a lot of information on there that is really not truthful and you're not helping anybody you're really just hurting yourself and the person who's trying to, to hire you um, so resumes can come in a lot of different formats now um, like i said you should tailor it to the job so if you're a graphic designer and you have a piece of paper that looks like this i think that you're probably not going to get the job but if you're a graphic designer and you have a really nice portfolio that expresses how good you are at, at putting a, um, a PDF together or how you can put a, a photo collage together or you can do something with web design too and it, it all works together as a big package, then you're probably going to have more, more propensity for the job. Um, if, in my line of work in economic development, it's all about experience and the, and the, the projects that you've worked on. So. I would talk a lot about the businesses that I've helped recruit, um, the ways that we work with businesses when they're having a hard time. Um, and we would talk about maybe some of the, the hopes and dreams we had in the community and, and how we accomplish those things. Um, another thing that is coming out now with COVID and it was happening before is video resumes. Um, it's something that you can do at home. Everybody has a phone now, it seems like, and it's not that hard to have some video editing software to make it look a little bit better. So I would recommend that if you really are interested in trying to make a splash with certain, with certain uh, employers, do a video resume. I mean, they, they can probably watch it quicker than they would be able to read through a printed resume. Um, and, it, and it's gonna give you, a, it's gonna give the employer a little bit of a taste of your personality. 
Um, another thing that they're going to look at is your online profile. And for those of you that actually have Facebook, I know a lot of high school students don't even do Facebook because it's not cool. Um, it, it's okay, but there are other platforms that you're probably utilizing, maybe Instagram, maybe Snapchat, maybe you're on TikTok, maybe you're actually making content on TikTok. There are things that people are going to be looking for and they will seek out your profile um, if you're trying to get a job. They're going to want to make sure that you do things the right way. Like I said, talk, telling the truth is very important. But if you have profanity or obscene language or racist things on, on your profiles, you might not be able to get the job. Um, so you have to be careful about what you're putting out there. And this is something that I think is very important for younger generations to understand. There is so much that we put out on the internet that it is, and it is there forever. It's, it's just there. We, we just don't realize how much can be, can be dug up many, many years after the fact. So be careful what you put on the, on, on the internet, what you put out on your social media channels, because it can be found and it might be reviewed. Um, another thing that I really think is important for folks as you're working through an online communication or um, maybe like text messages or emails is you have to be very concise because it's not, people don't like to read a lot of words when they're doing text message or email and they can't digest it. So um, be very careful how wordy you get with those types of communication. The two things that are also going to be much more important as COVID continues throughout our, our society, phone interviews and video interviews. And I know that you're probably aware of the importance of Zoom. You guys probably utilized Zoom, utilized it a lot when we were in the early stages of the pandemic last spring. And you might be using it now as your school goes into a hybrid situation or if you yourself are quarantined. Um, it's very important that you have a certain demeanor when you're on those Zoom calls or those those video interviews. Um, you know, we make jokes about whether or not people are actually wearing pants because if you're sitting down, you can't actually see that. Um, but looking the part, if you have that that nice, uh, if you're a, a nice shirt or a nice blouse, if you have a tie, if you think the job requires it, you can wear a suit jacket. Um, making sure your hair's done right, making sure your face is clean. You know, just silly things. What is behind you? You know, today we have a map behind me, um, but maybe if we were in a different place of my office, we, we would see different papers or, you, you know, is there something there that is going to turn off the interviewer and say, I don't really want to hire that person because what's around them bothers me. And so I think it's very important that you're aware of your surroundings when you do those video interviews. Phone interviews are less, you're less worried about what people will see but the tone of your voice is very important. So you need to be very careful about how you say things. You need to enunciate your words. I know sometimes I don't do that well, um, but I think it's very important that you think about that. Um, one thing that I found that is very helpful when you're doing phone or video interviews is that you would sit and you would record yourself, whether it's a, a video recording like we're doing here, or if you would do a voice recording so that you can hear yourself and understand what the other person is hearing. Um, Another thing that is, is still very important when you're talking about how you look and how you act is the in-person interview. Um, this, for many, many years, this was the most important part of getting a job because it allowed people to see how, how, how the applicant was dressed. Were they making a, a good level of eye contact? Handshakes are very important. If it's firm, if you look the person in the eye as you give them that handshake, does a person smell good? And I know you can't convey smell in a video, but when you get into an interview setting where it's one-on-one -on -one, or maybe there's two or three interviewers with you as the applicant, that smell is very important and it's very much tied to your their memory of you. Um, and I'm sure that if you, you go through your memory banks as individuals, you can remember places that you walked in where it smelled really good or it smelled really bad. Um, Another thing that you need to worry about when you're doing the interview, whether it's the in-person one or a video one, you need to speak clearly. I think I mentioned that earlier, articulating your words. You also need to be able to answer the questions because if somebody asks you about why you didn't, you know, maybe you got fired. And if you don't answer that question directly, um, they're going to think that you're avoiding it because you're embarrassed about it. Maybe if you, if you are, um, if you had a bad experience with something and, and you don't want to talk about it, you need to figure out a way how you can answer a question so that it, it doesn't throw up a red flag for the interviewer. 
but it, it also allows you to answer the question appropriately. Um, another thing that's really important with in-person interviews is asking questions. Asking questions is probably the biggest thing I look for with an interview because if people are not asking me questions as somebody who is offering a job, it doesn't give me any confidence that they actually care about the position. And I think for you trying to get into the into the job market, I think it's very important that you you ask a lot of questions about the position and it shows that you really are invested in trying to take on those responsibilities tied to the job. A um, couple of deal breakers that I think are very important to understand, whether it is an in-person interview or a virtual or video or phone interview, um, checking or answering a cell phone during an interview is always a deal breaker. You know, you try and you try and put your stuff on silent. I, you know, if it's a really important interview, I've, I've hung up the phone with my wife and I said, I'm leaving the phone in the vehicle because I don't even want the opportunity of it interrupting me. I don't want it uh, sidetracking me, even though I can feel, because I can feel the vibration in my, in my pocket. Um, showing up late and not acknowledging it. I think it's very important that you address something like that from the onset. Uh, stuff happens. If I was going to interview somebody at 10 a.m. and they showed up at 10.15 and they said, um, you know, I, I actually got pulled over on the way here. I didn't realize that I was speeding. I'm going to give them a free pass. I'm not even going to worry about it that they were speeding. But if somebody walks in at 10.15 and they said, all right, you ready to go? And I'd be like, wait a minute. You didn't even acknowledge that you were 15 minutes late for a 10 o'clock appointment. I don't know if I can trust you to be an employee at my place of business. Um, something that is another deal breaker, not bringing items that were requested. So if I would email you and say, we're going to do an in-person interview on October 10th, and I need you to bring your resume, your cover letter, and five examples of work that you've done in the last five years, um, if you did not present that to me as you walked in the door, I'd get very suspicious. If I ask for it and then you present it to me, I'd be a little bit, you know, I'd be more comfortable. Um, but if I ask for it and you don't have it, you are not getting the job. Um, another thing that is, is really important is wearing the proper attire. And so if I'm going to try and be an attorney and I walk in with gym shorts and a cutoff t-shirt, I don't think I'm going to get the job as that attorney. Uh, however, if I go into a, um, a rec facility and I walk in with a three-piece suit and I want to be a, phys uh, a, a trainer, I think they're going to give me a look and say, you know, you probably would have been better off with just jeans and a polo for this interview, or maybe even, you know, a pair of a gym shorts and a, a t-shirt would have actually been okay, because then you could have shown us how athletic you really are or what exercises you were going to, you were going to present to our clients. Um, this is probably one of the most important deal breakers, and, and it's very hard to do. As humans, we like to talk bad about things, but if you speak poorly of an employer that you had in the past, it's probably going to come back and bite you in the butt. Um, one, I might know that employer, and I could say, wow, I, I, I heard that you were giving this person a rough time, and then I get the other side of the story from that employer. Two, I'm going to be concerned as a, a potential employer for you. If you're sitting on the other side of the table and you're speaking poorly about somebody, I'm going to say, what's going to happen if things end badly at this job? Are you going to talk ill will of me as an employer? Most likely, yes. So it's going to be, um, you have to be careful about how you, you approach situations. If things did not end well at the previous job, it's, it's okay that not every job works out. So understand that it's okay to have bad experiences in your job. Just be prepared so that you know how to appropriately answer it. Don't throw that past employer under the bus, but don't you don't have to be dishonest either. Um, just be careful about how you answer those questions. The fourth big bullet point that I have, and this is my last bullet point, is that job searches are hard. And I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to scare you because I want you to understand that it is hard for both sides of the table. So for you on the other side of the table as the potential applicant, it is very hard. You have to do a lot of research. You have to go out and you have to take time out of your day to, to do interviews, to, to do that research, to prepare the resume and cover letter, to think about what's the right thing to wear, to make sure you smell good, to make sure you look good, all these different things. Um, but it's equally hard for us on the other side of the table as the interviewer. Um, it, it takes a, a great deal of skill 
to be an interviewer. It takes a great deal of time to look through resumes and cover letters to, to plan for those phone interviews. Like I said earlier, COVID has made it so that we must, must rely more on technology and you don't get the same uh, effect as if you're in the room together. And I, like I said, when we started recording this video, it's tough for me to do this presentation without a crowd because I love the interaction. And the interview process is exactly the same. You want to talk to people face to face. There are nonverbal cues that help you out. It makes you more comfortable with that person to sit with them one on one and see how they really act. Um, so it's hard for me as an interviewer. It's hard for you as an applicant. So just understand that nobody has it easy when it comes to searching for a job. Um, some final thoughts. I want to review what the four big bullet points are. One, it is not. It, it is a matter of who you know. So you need to have good references and you need to have a good network to be able to get a job. Two, you need to, it, it's also what you know. So you need to have a good amount of experience and also a good education to back up what your jo the job that you're trying to apply for. Um, how you look and how you act is the third bullet point. And like I said, we spend a lot of time on that because it's so important how you look, whether it's on paper with your resume or how you look on a video interview, how you look on a social media profile, or even how you look in person. It's, it's very important that you, you look the part for your job and that you follow through and everything on, whether it's social media or the resume or everything in between, it all says that you want this job. And lastly, please remember, job searches are very, very hard. Whether it's you as the applicant or me as the interviewer or whoever's on the other side of the table as the interviewer. It might be five people, but that doesn't mean that all five of them are, are comfortable with being the interviewer. It might be you and one other person, and it's tough to be in that one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, the bottom line is job searches in general are very difficult from the top to the bottom. It, who you know, what you know, how you look, and, and, and the fact that it's just a, it's a hard process. So I hope that this provides you with some, uh, uh, some ideas or some tips on how to get through that process. And so you get the answer at the end of the day that says, would, or the, the, you get the invite at the end of the day that says, would you like to work for me? Have a great day.